So two related questions. If Jesus died for your sin, then what is the purpose of works? And all those who all those who did all sin, how will they be judged on the day of judgment? Would you like to preach the gospel or shall I? Uh, why don't you go ahead and, and take it? I've been going a lot today. <laughs> so absolutely. Th thank you very much, Swanee, for the opportunity to present the gospel to you, to present the good news. But first, the bad news. How will those be judged on Judgment Day who sin? And I don't know why you put all sin. You don't need to put in the word all. all everyone who has sinned will be judged according to their sins. They will be judged as guilty, as not being worthy of being in God's presence. God, the Christian God, is all good. He's all loving. He is perfect. He cannot tolerate sin in his presence. So then you ask, what possible solution is there? If everyone is condemned to be judged on the day of judgment, and all will fall short of God's glory, and all will des be deserving of eternal destruction, uh, then what is the answer? Well, as you already know, the answer is that Jesus died for our sins. Now, you, you might know that phrase. Uh, well, you clearly know that phrase, but perhaps you don't really understand what that means. So, all sin needs to be judged. All sin needs to be punished. God, a truly just God, cannot allow sin to go unpunished. He can't say, well, you did six good deeds and one bad deed, so that's good enough for me. And, and he certainly can't do what the Islamic God does, is just arbitrarily say, oh, you're a Muslim? All your sins, I'm going to take them off of you, and put, even if they're as heavy as a mountain of burden, and put them on that Christian, just for the heck of it. Uh, which is what he, he supposedly does, according to the Hadith, that he just mm -hmm. takes the Muslim sins arbitrarily and puts them on other people and, and punishes other people for the Muslim sins. Very just God you have there. So a actually just God needs to punish sin. Well, who can, how can he do that? Well, he could destroy everyone. And, and that's basically what he did in the flood. You know, the, the Bible narrative happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. Unlike the Islamic narrative where there's just a bunch of random stories that have no <laughs> ultimate purpose, the biblical narrative has a purpose. God sh progressively shows that all the ideas that human beings have will not ultimately work. So one idea human beings might have is if you just destroy all the sinful people, that'll be good. And, you know, destroy all the sinful people and then... We'll be fine from there. Um, but what, what does Noah do, at least according to the biblical narrative, immediately after getting off the boat? He gets drunk. <laughs> immediately after being miraculously saved from the, the flood, mm -hmm. being the, his family being the only survivors, the first thing he does is he goes and gets drunk. It, it does not work. Human beings will continue to sin. Then human then beings have this idea that if you give us enough laws to follow, if you give us enough laws, this is what Islam, this is where Islam is. If you give us enough laws, you know, you give us a complete code of life, as you put it earlier, <laughs> uh, then we'll be good. As long as we have enough laws to follow, we, we'll be good. And I'm sure if you're honest with yourself, you know that doesn't work either. You know that you violate laws. You know that... that even when you aren't violating the laws, you want to violate them. You have sinful desires. So that doesn't actually work either. It may control the outward appearance from time to time. It may, uh, in some ways, in some forms, work from a human perspective, and then it makes things look better. But it doesn't ultimately work. It doesn't ultimately remove our guilt. So what does God say? Well, he says, in some sense... I am responsible. Now, is he really responsible? No. We have free will. We make our own choices. But in some sense, he is responsible because he created us. He knew that we would sin before he created us. And he decided to create us anyway because of a greater good, because of the ability to love, the ability for us to love God and him to love us back. Did he need to create us? No. He's self-sufficient. Uh, if the triune God is capable of loving because he has an object. All not capable of loving without creating because there's no nothing for him to love until he creates something. God is self-sufficient. However, because of his nature, because of his outpouring of love, because of his abundance of love, he wants to create anyway. So he does. 
but he knows we're going to sin. He knows we're going to rebel. So he, in some sense, bears some responsibility for allowing that evil to take place. And so what does he do? He says, I will take your guilt upon myself. I will punish myself for your guilt. I will bear the, the cost of your sin. And that's only half the equation. Uh, the other half of the equation, not only does he take our sin on the cross, he imputes his righteousness on us. He makes us such that when he looks at us, he sees himself. And he gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. He comes and lives in us so that unlike uh, pre-saved men, unlike non-Christians, we do have the ability to follow the law, to follow the moral law. The law is no longer a curse because we now, in a safe state, have the ability to follow the law, to be right standing before God. Does that mean we always follow the law? Of course not. So what is the purpose of works? The purpose of works is to express our extreme, abundant gratitude for God. Our works do not earn us anything. But we want to be good. We, our heart has been changed. We have God dwelling in our soul. We are different people. We are new creatures. And we want to please God. We want to be in a loving relationship with Him. We want to do good all the time. Do we always live up to our desires to do good? Of course not. There are many evil influences in this world. There are many ways for us to stumble. But we, our desire, once we've been changed, once we've been transformed by the power of the cross, is our, our core desire is to do good. We don't do works because we want something in return. We do good works because we want to. Anything you want to add? Amen. That was beautiful, <laughs> man. No, seriously, that was, that was incredible. Thank you. Um, and, and again, Swati, thank you for giving me the opportunity to preach the gospel. Yeah, we're going to clip that, dude. That was awesome.